The Rams spend so much money, so much, and yet can pull off a move and get a Bobby Wagner, add Allen Robinson to take the place of a Robert Woods and an Odell Beckham. You know, that's just very scary for me. So I got the Rams number one, and I, I didn't even mention their offense. I think I, I don't even need to talk about it. Uh, at number two, I have the 49ers. Even though they have question marks at the QB spot, I do believe their defense is good enough to make up for it. And if Trey Lance becomes what we all expect him to be or what the 49ers expect him to be, this is a very dynamic team offensively and defensively. Number three, I got the Cardinals because I, I just – I don't feel like they're good enough to, to, to contend with the Rams yet. I think they're right there neck and neck with the 49ers. They're pretty close. But – we already uh, spoke about the Kyler extension. Their top pick was another tight end, Trey McBride. He's pretty good, but second rounder. D hop suspension really throws a loop in there for me, so I can't really see them being that top dog team within the first. How, how long is that suspension? Nine games, if I'm not mistaken? It's six. It's six games? Okay. Maybe I just had the numbers reversed, but um yeah with with d hop suspended i don't think i think this is a team that needs to get off on a hot start and without him i can't see that happening and then seattle is my last team no really? russell wilson yeah no russell wilson and i i'm not a believer in drew lock i'm not a believer in, in gino or, or anybody else that they can throw under center so do you guys want to target the cardinals first or do you want to jump well, in i want i want to i want to jump in i want to jump yep. in um, just to hit a I couple of Justin's points. I huh? want to jump in on the Cardinals first since we were just talking about them. We're, okay. we're going to jump into it. That way we'll go in order from the Cardinals since we are just talking about them. They'll mm. go into the Rams, 49ers, mm. and Seahawks last. All right, well, I just wanted to jump on what Justin just said about all the teams, though. Okay. What do you want to do about Well, we're going to have to preview. I want to preview each individually. I know, but yeah. I want to. Okay. Okay. Yeah, just go into it. All right. So in terms of... Um, I had a feeling, Justin, that you were going to um, put, you know, Rams 1, 49ers 2, because I'm not mistaken, you put the 49ers in our top five teams when we did that uh, right. ranking. So I'm not surprised there. I had a feeling you were going to do that. Uh, with the 49ers, I mean, not sorry, not the 49ers, with the Cardinals, right? I know we just touched on it a little bit, but I touched on Kyler. So with the rest of the team, around them and I don't think so, so yeah D hop is a big loss right obviously even for me I, you guys have them ranked in your top 10 I have them in my top five receivers in the league right now um but they still have AJ Green a veteran receiver he he proved to be a, a big um get last year he performed very well not like AJ Green of old but he performed pretty well for his age and what he's been doing lately for the Bengals in his last years they did have Marquise Brown and he's coming off a career year, a thousand yards uh, plus. He's a burner. Um, he's he seems to be pretty freaking excited to play with Kyler Murray. So he's gonna have to fill in that role um, uh, for D Hop right there. They got uh, James, James Connor. You know, solid starting run. I, I, they they uh they lost Chase Edmonds uh, to Miami, I believe, right? Yeah. Uh, but uh, James Connor seem he he seems to be a touchdown machine in his two uh uh best seasons I forget off the top of my head I think it was 12 touchdowns with the Steelers and then 16 last year with the um Cardinals and that's only rushing I think he's got even a couple more receiving touchdowns there he had 18 last year I want to say one thing about James Conner this is what I'm really worried about James Conner was awesome and incredible for them in the red zone but he's not a three down back and this last season Chase Edmonds had almost a thousand yards and 900 he had well over 150 touches, well over 150 rushes. Without him in the fold, their backup is Darrell Williams. I don't know if that's going to be the one to spell James Conner because, newsflash, last time he was a three-down back in Pittsburgh, he couldn't stay healthy. And if that's your main back and he's not available, this Cardinals offense is going to look completely different next year. They have so many weapons on the outside. Between AJ, he had almost 1,000 yards last year, 848. And he had 16, 16 yards per reception, which is pretty good given the fact he's 33. Then he also added to the fold Marquise Brown. I think in a pass first offense this year, Marquise could have another career year playing with his former guy in college and Kyler. And especially considering the fact Diop won't be there, he's going to be their main target at the start of the season. You still got not Andy Isabel. We're not going to talk at length about him, but 
Last year, draft Rondell Moore. That's another burner. So there's more than enough weapons on the outside. You have Zach Ertz in the middle as well, which I think is absolutely huge for them, having a legitimate tight end. When was the last time the Cardinals had, like, a relevant tight end? I can't remember my lifetime. Can't remember, yeah. It's been a while. That being said, I think James Conner is the X factor here. If he doesn't stay healthy, this Cardinals team is missing the playoffs. He is that important to them. The red zone especially. If you're going to be missing DeAndre Hopkins for the first six games, it's one thing if you still have a couple of weapons that can kind of hold you over. But in order to actually win three of those games, we're going to talk about their schedule in a brief moment. James Conner must give them a good 14 games. That's actually what I wanted to get into, if you're cool with it, the schedule. Yeah. Because all those things that you just mentioned. So the first game of the season is against the Kansas City Chiefs. Oof. That's let me, let me pull up the schedule right now. Is that at home or is that away? That's at home. I believe. I got the Chiefs in that game. I got the Chiefs winning that. Brandon? Yep. No, yeah, I have the Chiefs winning that game. Um yeah, in ter- I, I would disagree with John in terms of James Conner being that important to this team. Um, really? Yeah, because listen, he's a good starting caliber running back. He's not gonna blow you away though. Uh, you, if he gets hurt, you, you could replace his production with who in free agency, huh? In, in the middle of the season, somewhere, huh? Yeah, with running back Johnson, easy. huh? I just I, he is so necessary to this team. You can't just replace the eighteen touch. Like he was only giving you three point seven yards a carry, but in the red zone, he was at times when D Hop was out their most important offensive player after Kyler. That's how relevant he was can, to finish off. You a can drive. you can find red zone red zone players to score touchdowns. Can you name me some in the free agent market? Because there aren't a whole lot. I don't have the free agency market off the top of my head, but I know that there's good veteran running backs on the free agency market. There always are. There always are. Every year, there's good veteran running backs going into the middle of the season that people can just pick up and plug and play. Yeah, running, I, I they always like say to... running backs are the easiest uh, position to just plug and go. So I, I, I'm, I'm not too worried about that. Um, yeah, I have to agree with Brandon on that one. That I feel like the, the running back position is probably the most replaceable position in the NFL today. There's yeah. very few. There's, there's outliers, obviously, to that, like a Derrick Henry. Yeah, like a Christian McCaffrey. McCaffrey. If he yeah. gets put, put down, then it's got Alvin Kamara. The difference or, is those yeah. teams had their options. The Panthers drafted Hubbard. They have their guys going into training camp in the season. With the Cardinals, you already lost Chase Edmonds. If you then lose your Pro Bowl back, who was one of the best for Eden signings last season, your running game is going to be completely different. In the red zone, they're going to have so much more difficulty trying to finish yeah, off but the we, we've seven seen points. We've seen the Cardinals in years uh, prior, in recent history, when their running backs go down, they they brought in a Chris Johnson, Adrian Peterson, just to name a few, and I know there's more Kenyon that Drake. came in and gave them pretty damn good production. Well, so James, they I, had Kenyon Drake, and James Conner was much better this last season. He was a whole. No, level I, I know up that. that we're we're not we're not arguing James Conner is not better than these guys. We're saying that James Conner uh, James Conner is not leaps and bounds. Like if you lose, like he's not on Christian McCaffrey's level or Derrick Henry or uh, Dalvin Cook. You can find a guy to give you um, similar production or just under his production. It. it He's not a bit a big the biggest one the biggest issue with me is uh, uh go ahead Justin no I was gonna say I, feel like I know John asked for free agent running backs and there's some ones that I see that aren't really slouches that I feel like you might be able to plug into the offense a Latavius Murray a Devonte Freeman a Carlos Hyde who's been very underrated I feel like over the last couple of years um Tariq Cohen while he's not your starting back he's not giving you three down uh, Gurley's still a free agent I know that I mean David Johnson is still out there I mean. I don't expect them to have that same level of production. I think the t- best two were the first two I mentioned in Latavius Murray and Devontae Freeman, if you're going to plug one in. but yeah. yeah, so for me, the biggest the biggest uh, hurdle for the Cardinals is D-Hop missing the first six games of the season. Really? Uh, and I think they, they did a – They got an even bigger great one job. Huh? They got an even bigger one on my end. I think there's a much bigger one. But you can continue. Okay. I want to – Chime in well, after. no, no, go ahead. What, what's what's the no? Bigger, I want you to continue. Uh, I'll catch you after. It's on the defensive side of the ball, so I want to cover the offense first. Okay. Well, I mean, like, a, I was just going to repeat what I said. Like, they did. They didn't do a great job, but they did a, uh, as good a job as they could with replacing him by getting a Marquise Brown. So, uh, their O line is uh real is very good. I mean, you got Beecham and Humphreys at the tackles, and uh, Rodney Hudson at center, and Justin. Uh, I always is it Pew or uh, Pugue? Pew. 
Yeah, Pugh? that's the former. Okay, so yeah, they got Justin Pugh, uh, our boy uh, JQ's guy from the uh, New York Giants. That's a little foreshadowing for uh, next week's NFL. Episode. Yeah, another one, Will Hernandez, right? You got two former Giants in there. They might. They might. They signed they might. Will Hernandez. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I look at that old line. So Kyler's going to be well protected there. Um, and if you want to jump in on the defensive side of the ball, John, go right ahead. Well, they lost Chandler Jones. And yeah. I, I don't think there's any replacing one of the, the best edge rushers no. in the NFL. And he's going to be turning 32 soon, or he's already 32. He's going to be turning 33. But that was a guy who even – he was hurt in 2020 and barely played only game five games. But the year before, he was leading the league in force fumbles. This last season had 11 sacks, 10 and a half, and what was it, 15 games? I think they're going to have a really tough time defensively without him. I think the X factor for them would be a guy who they – speaking of 2020, they drafted pretty highly in Isaiah Simmons. He's been a player who's had moments. He's had flashes. They're trying to figure out how to use him, whether it's at safety, whether it's at linebacker. He was labeled as most versatile – linebacker slash defensive player in that class that is their x factor this season you lose chandler jones you're gonna need him to step up and not just be a starter but a legitimate game changer for them on that side of the ball because the offense i expected to end the season to be much better this year i think you've seen the progression from three to five to eight wins and this last season they won it was 10 games or 11 because they started off seven and now i think so, off oh, okay um yeah, just to jump on that Chandler Jones point, like when I was looking at their defensive line, I went like, "Ooh, this is this is not good." Like, you got JJ Watt, but JJ Watt is not even like available after half of it. Yeah. He's not even half of what he used to be, though. Even when he's on the field, like, yes, last year he only played seven games, but even when he was healthy two seasons ago for Houston, he, for sixteen games, he didn't produce that well. Uh, JJ Watt to me is I, I liken him to. Um, when New England uh, signed um, James Harrison for that one year. And he was more of just like a veteran player who used to be a dominant elite player who could come in and make big plays here and there, especially in the later uh, later season um, and during the postseason. Give him some scoops in the playoffs so, too, right? Yeah. 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 Go ahead, Justin. I, I, I still believe J.J. Watt has way more left in the tank than what James Harrison did when he got to New England. So I, I do yeah, believe he's not going to be an every yeah, down no, guy. I, I don't expect him to be an all pro player that he wasn't. Also, in Justin, back. he okay. they're only relying on JJ Watt basically on that D line. Mm. Like he's the only one of value that you can look at. Other guys are, are just guys, let, let's be honest. Yeah. You know? Um, so and if you're putting that much stock in JJ Watt right now, it's 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 just he's not what he used to be. Um, he's 33. In the last six years, he's only played over eight games twice yeah. since 2015. Think about that. Yeah, and like I said, two seasons ago when he was healthy the whole season for Houston, I think he only had six sacks. It, it's just the production's not there even when he is healthy. Uh, but I, I do agree with John that Isaiah Simmons needs to have a breakout year this year. Um, he he When he was drafted – this guy was looked at as an athletic freak of nature. I mean, just to let – he's 6'4", 238 pounds. I've I seen I see this, and I was just like – he's listed as a linebacker, defensive end, cornerback, safety. He's played all these positions. He ran a 4'3", had a 39-inch vert and an 11-foot broad jump, which is just absolutely insane when you look at the averages for the positions that he plays. It's it's crazy. He needs to he needs to take a jump this year, and prove to everybody that it's he's not just um, physical characteristics. He can produce on the football field at an elite level. 